Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Halfaday, welcome to KUAM News Weekend Edition. I'm Nick Delgado. Thank you for being here with us this weekend. It's gobble gobble season, though a nationwide shortage of turkey is taking the country by storm, forcing many people to look for other Thanksgiving meal options. But has this shortage reached the island? Daniel Paris with the answer. Due to an avian flu outbreak, the nation is suffering from a turkey shortage. Finding the usual star of Thanksgiving meals has now become a challenge for many. As for what this means for us on Guam, Payless Supermarket President and CEO Kathy Calvo assures residents that as of now, they have an ample supply. Today, a little less than one week before Thanksgiving, you can find your turkeys at Payless Markets. With regard to the national shortage, we actually got wind. Um, the uh, avian flu, bird flu, had impacted the nation and we got wind of it earlier in the year and uh, we, we made sure that we procured our inventory ahead of time so that by the holiday we would be set. Calvo says the stock they brought in this year was less than what they would normally receive. We brought in about 60,000 pounds of birds. We brought in Genio and Butterball. You will find a few butter balls in some of our stores, but it's going really fast. The challenge really has been in getting uh, the proper allocation of sizes and quantity of various birds. But um, generally speaking, you will find a turkey if you shop early. Since turkey is in such high demand this year, you can expect prices compared to last year to go up. Additionally, the shortage has led to many residents making plans to dine out. If you're looking to avoid the hassle of cooking, several businesses got you covered. Hotels like the Hilton Resort have to-go meal specials or dine-in options at all their restaurants. Others, such as the Hyatt, will be hosting its popular Grand Market Brunch. Restaurants will also be offering Thanksgiving meals for delivery. But if you're not trying to deal with the holiday crowds, you can also check out those deals on food delivery services like the UnoGo app. Bone Appetit. Daniel Perez, KUAM News. Well, a drug smuggler will find out this week how long he will spend in federal prison. Jeffrey Maldonado is set to be sentenced in the District Court of Guam Tuesday. He, along with James Damasio, were convicted for their part in dealing more than half a million dollars in meth in Guam. Damasio sentenced to 25 years in prison. The feds finding the pair had smuggled drugs into the island through the mail in 2019. The case involving four pounds of the drug ICE, Maldonado will be sentenced Tuesday morning before Chief Judge Francis Tedinto Gatewood. A manhunt for a murderer is now, now heads into week two. Earlier this week, the Dededo mayor shared worry for her community as the shooter remains on the run. Here's this week's Crime of the Week. A quiet area along Chalan Escuela in Dededo is rocked. A man is dead following a shooting at this home. The person who pulled the trigger remains at large. I was shocked because what happens is that's an area where children traverse to get to school, at, to and from school. Families drive through there, uh, you know, to get their kids to FB and, and Simon Sanchez on a daily basis, except for the weekends. But I'm, of course, I'm concerned because that happened right in that area. And, you know, it being Chamorro Land Trust property, you know, um, people are in there living on their land and then there's also a lot of farming. Dededo Mayor Melissa Savars, who is currently off island, heard about the tragedy unfolding in her village on Saturday morning. I know of two families that live there, um, and I, I'm just scared for their safety now, you know. Um, you know, I am concerned, but most especially for the safety of the children and the families getting to and from the school. Responding officers say the man was found with multiple gunshot injuries. Authorities performed CPR before he was rushed to GRMC, but he didn't survive. I'm concerned that that person is still out there and I don't know who their next target may be. The victim identified later in the week as 37-year-old Edward Bamba of Dededo. His death ruled a homicide. KUAM has learned that investigators spoke with a woman who was at the home. She reported a silver Ford sedan pulled up to the property. The victim then went outside to meet with them before the woman heard at least two shots being fired and the car speeding away. Our prayers go out to the, the family of the victim. 
uh, but then importantly to please look out for in, in your surroundings and be aware of uh, who's around you. Crime scene detectives are leading the investigation. The Guam Election Commission will certify the results from the general election this week. If you haven't been following Decision 2022, the top vote getter was the incumbent, Governor Lulian Guerrero. Natsuki Hiriyama caught up with the governor to talk about what she feels has been her legacy in the first four years and what mark she wants to leave behind in the second term. I think my legacy for the first year, first four years of governor is uh, saving our people's lives and protecting our people from this pandemic. That's what Governor Lu Leon Guerrero says is her legacy in her first term as the governor of Guam. The Magahaga's legacy won for the history books as an unprecedented global pandemic hit our island's shores in the middle of her term. Coming out of this pandemic very strongly in terms of our economic strength, in terms of our financial stability as a government, and in terms of uh, lifting our people up and uh, helping them in their struggles as a result of the pandemic. She's referring to Guam's first ever unemployment program, which offered relief to displaced workers. And after gaining success in a rather nasty campaign between the candidates, she beat former Governor Felix Camacho to serve another four years in office. Of course, I'm going to work towards uh, strengthening our health care uh, delivery system. I want to make sure our people get the health care that they need and not have to go off island. Uh, of course, uh, um, creating jobs and lifting our people from poverty. Leon Guerrero has been pushing for a new hospital and medical complex proposed on the Eagles Field property in Mangilao. The proposal not well met by the original landowners who just want their land back. As for the four years ahead, the governor says she wants to improve health care and the economy. The next four years, the end goal here is to provide a better quality of life and a much more um, I think uh, lifting up of our people's um, quality of life. Matsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. A boost to the economy or to boost a campaign? Some NMI lawmakers are seeking answers about one of the Commonwealth's financial assistance programs meant to help boost local businesses. Regional correspondent Tomas Ben Gluttony reports. CNMI House lawmakers have more questions than answers about the Commonwealth's latest program called BOOST, which stands for Building Optimism, Opportunity and Stability Together. It provides financial assistance to local businesses and nonprofits through grants provided by the Governor's Office, Finance and Commerce. To get to the bottom of the BOOST program, how much is the balance and on all the questions that come with it. In a letter to the Secretary of Finance and Commerce, Representatives Selena Babauta and Dono Manglonia asked for the names of entities that administer the program, funding or revenue source, names of all approved and disapproved applicants, and the amounts awarded to all recipients. The timing of the program during an election season has been questioned. CNMI Governor Ralph Torres, who is running for re-election, has denied allegations of vote buying from the opposition. In response to KUAM Thursday, Secretary of Finance David Atalik says, It's a program in the works for many months and wish we could have pushed forward earlier. I wish it was not politicized. The lawmakers say that they haven't received a response from finance or commerce by their self-imposed 10 a.m. deadline on November 18. Atalik says they're working on gathering the information. They plan to call those involved for an informal meeting to set the record straight. Is it sustainable? Is it, um, you know, does it conform to statutes? And like I said, it's just really to um, help us uh, in the legislature to, to create laws, bills with respect to federal funds in the future. They say it's not an investigation, but a fact-finding mission. We are not politicizing this. This, in fact, if any hearing would or, or meeting would be conducted between Secretary of Commerce, um, Secretary of Finance, it would happen after the runoff. We're not going to do anything uh, prior to that. It's not related to, to or trying to influence anything with respect to the election. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. Thanks, Tomas. Now to a notice from local health officials. A temporary food service establishment 
Sanitary permit is still needed to serve food and beverages at any special event. Public Health Division of Environmental Health reminding event coordinators and food vendors to apply for this sanitary permit ahead of time to receive it prior to each event. Environmental Health Public Health Officer Supervisor Hermeliza Orionando. They are still required to possess a sanitary permit, a separate sanitary permit from like their, their restaurant or their food truck or even their manufacturer. So they need to have a temporary food service establishment sanitary permit specific to the location and the dates of the event. During um, these events, they're not going to have their enclosed facilities. They're not going to have, you know, electricity, hot water provided to them. We need to make sure that they still meet the minimum requirements to ensure that they're practicing food safety while they're serving the food. Should vendors fail to present the sanitary permit to health officials for the specific event, they will be ordered to stop all operations. They could also face administrative penalties for operating without valid sanitary permits. For more info, contact DEH at 646-1276 or 395-70 through 75 or email publichealth at dphss, deh at dphss.guam.gov. Keep it here to Weekend Edition up next, Culture Club. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh, streaming TV. Switch between live TV and your favorite streaming apps with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch your shows and multiple devices all at the same time, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, or savings for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, streaming TV. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Panilin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. KUAM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Welcome back now to your Culture Club inductee. Culture Club is brought to you by Tropical Ice. Hafadei Kwahusi Nicole Kintaniza. I am 27 years old. I am a weaver and a teacher. I started weaving when I was in college. I majored in Chamorro Studies at UOG, and um, I met a friend there named James Bamba, and uh, he was a weaver, and um, they you know, announced that there were weaving uh, classes or weaving activities going on at Sagan Kutun and Chamorro in Tumon. Uh, and so I went to one of the um, workshops that they had, and. I just fell in love with it and I thought it was so amazing and so beautiful and so I had asked James if I could be his apprentice and he said yes and that's where it all started. Uh, so I started off small, um, I started off just learning how to make simple things like 
bracelets and rings, um, you know, fans, the gueja and everything. Um, and then, you know, gradually over time, um, my weaving instructor, James, had, you know, showed me how to make guaguats and kotuts and, um, you know, very functional things. I think my favorite thing that I've made is the um, ancient Chamorro hat. So this is an example of it. This was made by um, one of my best friends, Ariel Lowe. I thought it was so cool to be able to make something that our people used to make hundreds of years ago and you know go through the same process of doing the leaves and you know um, measuring it out and doing all the math and then producing something so beautiful from just a couple strips of leaves. Yeah. Depending on what you weave with, you know, there's different materials that you can weave with, um, whether it's coconut leaves or pandanus. I prefer to weave with pandanus. Pandanus is so durable. Upgeck, all right, in tomorrow. It's a longer process and it's a more painful process, but I think it's more worth it in the end. Um, you have to process these leaves. These are processed leaves here, but um, they have thorns all over them. They have three, three sets of thorns all over it, and you have to um, strip the thorns off with the CE, and um, you, know, you have to smooth out your, your leaves and process them, and that in itself is a labor of love. You have to be patient, patient with yourself and patient with the leaves. Another quality that's important is to not take yourself too seriously. I think um, if you're like too focused and you're too like, I gotta get it done and I gotta do it exactly perfect and I have to do it exactly this way, then um, it's not gonna come out correct. It's not gonna come out right. And you have to love it. Like you have to love the process from the very beginning and you have to love what you're making and love why you're making it. I think it's so important to preserve the culture. Um, I'm a teacher, as a teacher I teach Guam history and that's my most important thing is that um, if you don't understand the past, you're, um, you're not gonna know where you're from, you're not gonna know who you are and who your people are and how amazing our culture and our people are and our history is. And so that's like the biggest thing for me is I, like I teach Guam history because I feel like it's important for our people to know where we come from and who we are and what we did and how we can continue to do it. Like we've been weaving for hundreds of years and I see us weaving for hundreds more years. You know, how, no matter how advanced technology gets, I feel like weaving will always have a place in our culture and on our island. I think a lot of the younger generation is committed to um, preserving the culture and learning as much as they can. You see it a lot. Uh, with like the Harao Academy and with Nihi Kids and all of these other organizations where um, weaving and all of our cultural practices are now accessible to these kids. I love that now it is way more accessible, you know, and I feel like the, the kids of this generation and the next are making the effort and really trying to preserve and continue our culture and our language and I think that's a beautiful thing. My name is Nicole Quintanita, and I am proud to be part of KUAM's Culture Club. Culture Club is brought to you by Tropical Ice. Stay tuned, sports is next. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier 
for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. When we face an uncertain path, when we struggle with life's challenges, and when the unexpected happens, it's a beautiful day. We rely on the people we trust, who we can always count on. And the ones who give us the most care throughout the years. Rely on Calvo's Select Care to give you the comfort and security you need it's a beautiful day. wherever you are. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. new Hyundai Tucson. This is a brand new thing. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. Kelvin Fitzial is back in the win column. Fitzial faced Ben Schneider in a heavyweight matchup at Brawl 2, held at the Dusitani Resort. Fitzial picked up the win in the first round. Kelvin landing some heavy shots and caught Schneider with the right hand. Fitzial jumps all over him and kept landing some shots, forcing the referee to call the fight after Schneider was unable to respond back. Roki Martinez, 15-8-2, took on Japan fighter Yuchi Yokoyama. 4-2 as a pro, Roki landing at will on the feet. Yokoyama tries to shoot but gets stuffed by Martinez. Roki gets inside control and works his way to get the back of Yokoyama. Roki picks up the win via rear naked choke in round one. Turning over to some soccer news. All of it, Nazarene University won the CCAC tournament title with the 2-0 win over Cardinal Stritch. Former FD standout soccer player and Guam Youth National Team member Nainoa Norton scored a goal late in the match to help his team secure the win. The Tigers play in the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference of the NAIA. Our men's national basketball team improved to 2-0 in the FIBA Asia Cup 2025 pre-qualifiers held in India. Guam held on to the 67-64 win against Hong Kong to advance. Jericho Cruz led Guam with 23 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists. Ernest Ross and Jonathan Galloway both chipped in with 13. Jamar White added 10. Guam's U15 girls national basketball team is preparing for the FIBA U15 Oceania Championship. The girls have been training since June. Leading the team will be Gia Peters. Guam will play the NMI in their opener on November 22nd at 4.45 in the afternoon at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. These girls at this age group have a chance to represent Guam at the highest level and play against the top competition around the Oceania region. So it'll really give them a, a good idea of where we stand uh, in this region in terms of basketball. But the good thing is we do have a couple girls on the team this year that are fairly tall. We have about a, a 5'11 girl, Amara Del Carmen, um, and we just plan to use our speed and we have pretty big forts. So looking to just push the ball, run and gun. The main focus has been getting in as many scrimmages as possible, working the girls with the shot clock and making sure the team is able to run their sets before the shot clock expires. We've been working on our man-to-man -man defense, which is something that not always, these girls are not always trained to do, but I've been emphasizing our man-to-man -man defense and really just pushing that pace up court. It's exciting uh, being able to play here at home with everyone, being able to support their families, their friends, 
of just reminding them to go out there and have fun, but at the same time, we're representing Guam to play with pride. Alumni hoops over at the jungle in Mingilao. Elite Friars taking on the Bulldogs. Both teams hanging around. Friars held on to the slim lead with under nine minutes to play in the second half. Bulldogs down 57-53, looking for a bucket. John Lorena with the reverse layup after hitting the defense with the little hesitation move on his way for two points. Will Stinnett with the assist to Devin Sudo cutting to the basket. Sudo with the pull-up jumper just inside the free throw line. Bulldogs try and cut into the deficit by attacking the basket. Back the other way, Kyle Guyton. Bounce pass to Vince Estella. Estella too hard on the first attempt. Picks up the rebound and goes glass for the score. Elite Friars with the win, 69-63. to Sudo with some hang time. Switching hands for the scoop shot here. The Payless Sharks and Clutch Royals hit the court next. Sharks hitting early to get the game started. Alfredo Royster with the hard take to the basket. 17-8 Sharks midway through the first. Royals get on board off the missed free throw attempt. Aaron Castro outrunning. Castro takes the contact and pulls up, hitting the off-balance shot off the backboard for two. Down 32-14. Royals answer with the deep ball in the corner. All net from the outside. Sharks pushing the pace. Castro no good on the layup. Daryl Shandor cleaning up around the glass. Put back is good, adding to his team's lead. Royals big man showing some range. Long two-point shot from up top rattles in. Jay Casimiro with the loose ball gives it up to Castro, who finds Royster open in the corner for three. Swagger! Sharks pick up the double-digit win and will take to the court this Saturday against the Bulldogs at 2 in the afternoon. The Elite Friars also hit the court on Saturday at 5 p.m. to face Southern. <laughs> Ukadu with home court advantage on senior night. The JFK Islanders led 13 to 12 after the first quarter of play. Jasmine Sampson dribbles left and gets to the basket for the bucket and one. JFK won on a short run in the second quarter. Layla Smart splits the defense and gets in for two points. Alea Fontanilla scored three straight baskets for the home team. Fontanilla hits Jocelyn Borja baseline for the easy two. Han with the spin move keeps her pivot foot planted and hits the tough shot. Veja Blas gets the pass from Haley Cabrera. Blas gets around the defender and hits the short floater. Islanders pick up the win on the road. Francesca Aguilar showing her handles finishes strong at the rim for the basket and one. Just as a reminder, tickets for the FIBA U15 Oceania Championship can be purchased at guamtime.net. You can also pay at the door. So make sure to come out and support our boys and girls national basketball teams as they face the top teams from around the Oceania region. The tournament runs from November 21st through the 26th at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. Now in programming news, Monday, November 21st, we have a doubleheader for you. On KUAM TV 11, NFL on CBS, the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Keep it locked to KUAM TV 11. At 7.25 in the morning, the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Switch the channel over to KUAM TV 8 at 11.15 in the morning. Sunday night football on NBC. Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs taking on Justin Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. I can't make that amount work right now. Mom, what is it? Can I get new basketball shoes? We'll see. Can I please have twenty dollars for my field trip? I don't know. Can I go to my friend's house after school? Anak hindi pwede. We're all trying our best to make ends meet. The governor's child care programs are helping businesses and working families care for Guam's kids. This ad is paid for with funds administered by the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Visit GuamChildCare.com to apply today. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with 
bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think it's something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Panilin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. Finally tonight, your Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club shout-out submitted on KUAM.com. It's time for some weekend birthdays, everybody. And on Saturday, Jayla Amika Indalecio celebrates birthday number three. And to my baby girl, mommy, daddy, and your two sisters, Jacine and Jalea, say they love you. Jeff Anthony Duckowitz, happy eighth birthday. And may your day be as amazing as you are. We love you with all our hearts. Say mom, dad, and all of your siblings. John Segalit, happy birthday to you from your family, who is very, very proud of you and loves you very much. And Evie Lou Quintanita, happy birthday number 15 to our young lady. We love you more and more each day from Mama, Papa, Mommy, Daddy, Ashton, Nina, and Uncle Jason, along with Auntie Queenie, Landon, and Cammie, and all of your loving cousins. And thank you for joining us for KUAM News Weekend Edition. You can always stay up to date on KUAM.com or by following us at KUAM News on social media.